Steven here again, and welcome back to my video on Apache Wi-Fi. So before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, it's very helpful. Let's me know how much you enjoy these videos and whether or not I sh should continue to make them. And you get the opportunity to use the notify button as well. Don't forget to leave comments down below if you have any questions or if you just want to provide some uh, general support in the comments. I always look forward to reading those. Now let's go ahead and get started. So today's video is going to be on using Apache NiFi to tar multiple files into a compressed gzip archive. So a couple of reasons you might want to do this. You might have a lot of log data for the day. Maybe you create, maybe you generate log files from some type of software that you're using and they get generated every hour or whatnot. Or maybe they're being generated based off their size and they generate a new file. So you can use this to tar all those files together and then go ahead and zip it as well into gzip. Uh, in my workplace, I use it for, well actually, I consume a tar gzip from a source uh, that I have to consume flat files from. And what it gives me is about a two and a half gig file. And when I when I take that in and consume it and uncompress it, uh, and then on tar it, I go from two and a half gigs up to like 10 or 12 gigs. So it's a really good way to compress files down and uh, be able to store them for archiving, whether it's log files or some type of data files. So in this case, we're gonna use it with our aviation data flow, uh, the data we've been creating there and putting into our MySQL database. So what we have going on here is, let's switch over to dBeaver, and we'll take a look at that real fast. Actually, not dBeaver. Uh, I've already used dBeaver, and I've gone into the database already and extracted all the files. So if we take a look here, we have a folder available. We can see uh, on my local system here, I've uh, extracted out the entire table into multiple files, uh, trying to keep it around one megabyte each. So that's why we have like 29 files here, but I don't want to create this many zips uh, and comp uh, compress it this way, right? So what I want to be able to do is group them all together first. Uh, in this case, that's how I want to do them. And the way I can do that is by moving these files over to uh, my local data folder that I have for bringing the external data into NiFi. You can see I already have them all here. So we have all the files. They all have a different name on them uh, for which file part they are. So we should be ready to start. Let's go ahead and switch back over to NiFi now. And then we can go ahead and start building out this flow. All right, get in here a little bit. So. What we need to start with first is a get file, or yeah, a get file. And the get file will let us retrieve all of those individual CSV files, since that's the format they're being saved into right now. For the get file, we need to populate this one, and we are going to use the, let's see, so the location path for this is opt data and NiFi. Where I'm putting those files at. Uh, it's the only thing in the folder, so I can go ahead and stick with the consume everything. I don't want to keep the source file in this case because if I was doing this production, I'd want to run it and then go ahead and uh, make sure I got those files out of there, depending on how I had them set up. Uh, recursive directories, in this case, I'm going to set it to false because I wouldn't want to go beyond. And we're going to make it five minutes just because we're not going to run it that often for this uh, flow that we're creating. And then other than that, we want to make, we're going to do this one time. So we want to make sure we make the batch. I'm, I'm going to make the batch size 30 uh, due to the fact that I have 29 files. So I want to grab all of them on one uh, go and not have any left in there that I didn't grab since I want to put all these and merge them all together in a one tar. All right, I think we're good after looking at all these settings here, so we can leave them as is. Go ahead and do that. And then the next one we need is going to be, uh, first thing we have to do is merge all these together into a tar file. So in order to do that, we go grab another processor. And for this, we want the merge processor. So if we look, merge content and then merge record. So merge content will let us merge a group of flow files together based on the user defined strategy and package into a single flow file. Uh, record is a little bit different here. 
will give us the ability to mess around with the record inputs as well. But, or yeah, it contains all the records, right? So we're gonna go to the content. We're gonna drag that down here, take the success relationship, go ahead and put it on the side so we can compact this a little bit. And now we have some configuration to do here. So under merge strategy, we wanna check that. We wanna go ahead and leave it on bin packing. We're not gonna change that one, but under merge format, we're gonna go ahead and change it to tar. Now you can see there are quite a few options you have you get a pick from in here zip being in one of those and then you have flow file stream version three two and you have flow file tar version one so that's another one available binary concat take concatenation and then avro as well but we're using a tar for our format uh and then from here we're going to keep the attribute strategy we're going to leave it how it is, as it is and due to the nature of how I'm doing this, but this will be something you want to keep in uh, pay attention to as well. So minimum number of entries, right? We can do one, that's just fine. The maximum number of entries is 1,000. So there's a trick here though. When this processor runs, we could end up with anything between one and 1,000. Now, say you were doing, you're archiving a day's worth of uh, log files or something like that, and maybe it generated a log file your source gen generates a log file every hour. Well, you'd wanna make sure you got 24 of those, right? Or 23, depending on when you're starting. So in order to make that happen, uh, to make sure they all, we try to get all those into this one file or into this one tar, we can use what's called the max bin age. So in here, it lets us use a trigger based off time to, and it can be, as we see in the description, right? So expected format is duration, time unit, where duration is a positive integer. Okay, so we can use minutes, seconds, or hours. Now, in this case, I'm gonna use 30 seconds, because that should be more than enough time to gather all that stuff, to make sure I get uh, all the files imported with the Git processor, and then sent to this processor into the queue, and then they're all waiting in the queue. And then, because this is one to 1,000, we know we're gonna be getting 29 files, 30 files, uh, yeah, 29 was our max, we're starting at zero, so 30 files. That means we should be able to grab all of them waiting in the queue. So this is basically our little queue timer in a way. <laughs> it's not, but uh, this is what's gonna prevent it from grabbing them too early. Uh, maximum number of bins, so you can set that as well. Uh, delimiter strategy, we're gonna be doing it on the file name. And honestly, there's nothing else that we want to change here for ourselves. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything else. So let's go ahead and leave that. Okay, so from the merge content, now this is gonna tar them up. Now from the tar, we want to compress it because we want to take it from, uh, I think the total size of this data will be about 29 and a half, almost 30 gig or 30 megabytes. So by the time we get done doing the tar and then we move it into the compression, we should be able to get it down to, I think maybe 1.5, 1.8, uh, maybe just under two uh, megabytes. And that's a pretty good ratio for what we're trying to do here. So the next thing we need is the compressed content. And there we go. So compresses or decompresses the contents of the flow file using a user-defined compression. All right, so let's go ahead and select that one. We'll take this, we'll grab the merge. Move it off the side. We need to do something with those two relationships that we're not using. We're gonna terminate them. And then we have compressed content. So in this step here, we need to change the mode. So under mode, we have two options here. We have compress and decompress. In this case, we are gonna be doing compression. So let's go ahead and select that. Now under compression format, we can use this meme type or attribute, which is the default. We can go ahead and select that and we have a drop down here. So the drop down, we have a couple options. And from here, we have gzip, deflate, bzip2, and as you see down the list, we have about four more. We know we're gonna be using a gzip. Go ahead and select that. You can change compression level if you want. Uh, compression level to use is about only when using gzip, deflate, or uh, XZ, Z, LZ, MA2 compression. The lower value results in faster compression, but less compression, uh, a max, or a max of zero indicates no 
for G zip bar minimal. So in this case, you know what, let's go ahead and just, it's not gonna hurt us to do it. So let's go ahead and set it to maximum compression. We'll select that. We are gonna say update the file to true. So what this will do is take the file attribute and take it from the dot tar and should do the dot tar dot gzip. So it should go ahead and append that to the end, which is what we're looking for. Go ahead and apply that. And we have to take care of the relationships. So from here, we're gonna use the put file, which is gonna be our final output to end our flow. Grab the success. Let's go terminate that relationship for the failure. Go ahead and move this off the side. I'm cleaning it up a little bit more here. All right. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing I want to do. Uh, so when this compression happens, it's going to give it a new name, or actually the merge content. So the merge content is going to give it a new name for the file because this is the first time the tar file is going to create it because we're merging multiple files into one. So it's going to pick up the, I think it's UUID. I have to go look again. We'll look at it when we go through the flow, but that's not what we want the file to be called at the end. So we, we want to give it a name. In order to do that, we need to use a update attribute. So update attribute, go ahead and connect that relationship instead. Grab this, move it off the side here, pack it in here. And then we know we're gonna to go to the put file next, so let's just go ahead and add that real fast. And oops, grab that. Oh, put you back. There we go. All right, so under in order to rename this, now I just happen to already know that the file, it's going to, over here at the merge content, it's going to create a new attribute called file name. So what we want to do, though, is update file name and give it a name that we want. So under that one, we are going to go ahead and select add property, file name, and then we're going to give it our name, active flights. Uh, archive dot tar dot gzip. All right, there we go. That's going to be our new file name. So we're going to overwrite the existing uh, one with the new one. And we're going to leave that alone. We're good there. And then we have our location we want to put the file in next. So let's go ahead and take care of that one. So put the file. We're just going to put it right back in the same directory we're taking all the files from. So directory is going to be up data nifi. That's where I'm putting my stuff at. I'm not worried about conflict resolution. Create a missing directory. True. We'll just leave it uh, basic there. Uh, if we wanted to, when we put the file in, we could give it new permissions or we could change the owner or the group as well. So those options are available. And you could do them from here when you write the file. Just make sure that your nifi instance has the permissions do everything you want to do. Okay, so that one's done. As you can see, we have relationships we need to handle for. So we have failure, success. We're going to terminate both of those because we don't need to worry about this one. It should be okay. Okay, so now we have an entire flow done. Let's see if we got it right here. We are going to go ahead and run this one now. So the first step is going to be to get the file. There we go, 29 files right there. I'm going to go over and look real quick. All my files are gone, so perfect. Now we have the merge content. Start with that. Now we get 29 files come out the one. We can go ahead and check on that one and see what it did here. So let's go ahead and look at the attributes. Okay, we can see that the path it came from, from the git file, the file group that it, came, that it had at the time, the file owner at the time, the permissions, and then we have the merge bin age, the merge count, 29 files, so we're good there. We can see the Mimi type is application tar, so a tar file is created here. And the file name right here, which I was talking about earlier, right? So we can see it was given a file name. Uh, I forgot exactly which one. It may have been the last file out of all the flow files. I forget which one it is. But uh, it's got a file name, right? And it's not the one we want at the very end. So that's why we have that extra step in there. So we're good to go. We have one 27.66 megabyte file. We're going ahead and leave that alone. Do the compression. We can see that's running. And all done. 
So that 27.66 went down to 1.3 megabytes. So a pretty good compression ratio there for what we're trying to get done here. And we have one file now with multiple files inside of it. And then we can go ahead and update the attribute, but let's go ahead and take a look at that step right there that we got. What was our results that we had out here for the attributes? Everything's mostly the same here, except now we can see we have a file name. The numbers stayed in the same for the first part of the file name, but now we have a tar.zip, or gz. So we can see that worked just fine there. We got all of them done in one because we had the, uh, back here at the merge, we had that uh, delay in there for 30 seconds, so that worked just fine as well. Now we can do the update. And if that did things correctly here, we should be able to see the name on the attribute change. There you go, file name .tar .gz. All done there, let's go ahead and put the file in there. And let's go over to mobile X term and see if I did this right. All right, so you can see I did a ls already to check the directory. There was nothing in there after we did the get file. So I went ahead and grabbed everything and removed them. We'll do that again. And now we have one file, our active flights archive.tar.gz. So here you go. If you got log files, you got, you got data you just want to archive, like I did here, a bunch of CSVs. Maybe I'm trying to make a, in my case, I could be making these CSVs available to either uh, archive myself or archive it into maybe an FTP server where I can make these available to someone else and uh, they can go ahead and consume this data. And if we're talking about big data that I normally work with. We're talking about gigs upon gigs. So this would be a way to uh, definitely shrink that and compress it up a little bit so that the transfer time for them to grab the files is much less than it normally would be. And they only have to deal with one file for the time period or scope of the data that I'm giving them versus having to deal with many files that they have to get all at once, right? Okay, so that's how you do that and how you go ahead and you can go ahead and generate your own archive using Nightfly to take care of those two important steps, which is the merging and the compression as well. And if you're just trying to do this, if just well, one more thing, we don't need to go through it, but if you need to do the other thing, which is, hey, someone's providing you the file as a tar.gz, then you can easily just change this a little bit. The only changes you'd be looking at, which real quick would be, you still have your git file or however you're getting it from the source. Once you got the file, uh, in this case, you would, because it's a zip, so it, or it's a gz, so you would go ahead and uh, do the uncompress or the compress first, remembering that you need to change this to decompress, and that would take care of that. You select the right settings there, and then there's actually one difference. So instead of merging and taking that down here, what we want to do is go back into Nifi's processor list, look for unpack, unpack content. And then from here inside this one, we would go ahead and change the packaging format to a tar because that's the format we'd have after the compression. So we'd have one tar and we go ahead and apply it. So then we have uh, get file, then the success from the uncompression. And then from there, we could go ahead and take these unpacked files, which would be individual CSVs if I was unpacking my same file. And then that would let me put them or do whatever I wanted to do with them next. Whether it's merge all the CSVs into one big CSV or uh, one big flow file so that I can put them into a table directly as I got the data from, that would be an option there as well. So really it's pretty much the same thing except the only difference being that we don't use the merge content this time. There is a separate processor for unpacking the content, and that's the one we want to use. Uh, just need to make sure you have the right permissions and stuff set for your NiFi instance so that it can access these files in the directory that you put them in. All right, so that's all there is to the, uh, basically this whole flow right here, which is using the Apache NiFi to tar multiple files into a compressed gzip archive. So if you liked the video, definitely hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a, go ahead and give the video a like if you liked it. And uh, don't forget to uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or like to hear something else. I enjoy reading your comments, so have a good day.